Hey everyone, welcome to your 10th uh, Java game development tutorial. Uh, if you remember last time, um, we made it so that we could get some you know, input and we could move our little face around the screen using the WAS and D keys, which is pretty cool. Okay, I'm going to try and keep this episode uh, under 10 minutes, uh, and I'm probably going to have to make more than one part to this episode because we're going to get into something a little bit more complex and a bit more gameplay based. Um, today, I'm going to create the little side-scrolling character uh, that we'll control for the game. I mean, I won't create the character. I'll create uh, the code for, uh, you know, moving our player around and navigating the world and all that. Uh, so let's get right into it. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new class. I'm going to call it Mob. Um, for those of you who don't know uh, what a mob is, a mob is uh, any kind of character, uh, either one that you control or one that's controlled by the computer, um, or something like that. Um, we want our mob to extend sprite, of course. Um, and then it needs to have this constructor, which calls the constructor in the sprite class, right here where it says super. Um, Mobs, let's see, they move around uh, usually, so I'm going to go ahead and give it a protected float called run speed. Um, for by default, let's have it be 50.0f, because it's a float. Mm -hmm. um, now I'm going to create a class, I'm going to call it player. Now for the player class, it needs to extend mob. And we'll add the constructor player, just like we did before. Oh, uh, what the? Okay, uh, <laughs> that wasn't right. Add constructor. Okay, there we go. Okay, so we've got pose X and pose Y, just like uh, before. Um, we're going to override public void update float delta time. And for right now, we're going to uh, um, we're going to override public void render graphics g. Ordinarily, we're not, we wouldn't override this, but for right now, since we're not doing any graphics uh, for our character yet, we want to override it so we can just draw a little thing to show where we are. So, g dot set color color dot green and g dot draw rect uh, pose X, pose Y, width and height. Uh, so for the width and height, let's go back into the sprite class. We're going to add a couple, of, um, oh, sorry, I have, see, I re-recorded this episode. Uh, I forgot to get rid of, um, I tried to get rid of everything that I, uh, my screen recorder crashed. I had to get rid of everything I typed in. Um, this right here, I didn't. So I'm going to go ahead and retype it just to show you. Public float width equals zero, public float height equals zero, and public boolean is solid equals false. What these are is, these are the effective width and height of the colliding rectangle of this object, um, and this is whether or not this object should be considered a solid object when it collides with other objects. I'll show you how we implement that. Um, so right here, the width and height are fine, but since they're floats, they need to be cast to integers, so we're going to do that right now. Also, pose x is a float, not an integer, so we're going to do that. And also, actually, we want to subtract width divided by 2, so that our pose x is in the center rather than the upper left corner. Same thing with pose y, minus height divided by 2. So that's what we end up with. Um, I'm going to pr put these in parentheses, though, because the width is also a uh, uh, float needs to be cast, so we'll cast the whole total number. Okay, so now if we were to go into our game class, we could go ahead and add where it says um, current world dot sprites dot add new test sprite. We're going to change that to player, but we can leave this part the same, and we're going to import player, and now... There we are, that little speck right there. The reason we're so small is because uh, our width and height values are zero. 
Uh, right now in player, we're going to change that. We're going to say width equals 10 and height equals 10 in our constructor. Now when we run it, check it out. We got width and height. Perfect. Um, and let's make our player a little bit bigger. I'm going to say 16 by 16. Because that might be a good sprite size whenever we uh, make the game. So now, there we go. That's pretty good. Um, in update, now here's things we get. We get thing. Here's where things get a little bit complicated. We need to find the best way to make our um, to handle physics and all that, and movement and that sort of thing. So, I'm going to work on that in the second part. Uh, we'll say that this is the first part. Um, but it looks like I'm my battery's in the red right now. I know it says it's got 18%, but it's gone down pretty quickly before. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and say that this is uh, part one of the episode, and in part two we're going to work on getting the physics right. Um, so if you like this uh, episode and this series, please comment, uh, like, and subscribe. I really do appreciate it. Um, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to post them in the comments, and I will address them uh, as best I can. Uh, and if you know anyone else who would be interested in this sort of thing, please tell them. Uh, I really do appreciate um, you spreading the word about this. So uh, thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.